Hey guys, welcome back to Zavalox channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Gundam Astray Red Dragon. Three times in a row, you guys chose this Master Grade. First, I asked you guys which premium banner you want to see after their stock in Australia. You chose the Astray Red Dragon. For the second time, I divided all the Master Grade into four groups. You chose the group with Astray in it. And then for the third time, individual voltings you still chose the astray red dragon today i'm gonna answer your request and we are gonna make a review about gundam astray red dragon now let me get this straight i love the astray series but we have too many model and too many master grade too many real grade too many high grade about it i wish they could release something else with these kind of cool design but not astray but on something else but anyway today the astray red dragon is here but for the red frame, though, my favorite variation is actually the red frame Kai with two katanas and then with the uh, tactical arms that can transform into arrow form, sword form, or delta form. Uh, that one right there will be my favorite red frame variation. The red dragon is coming out there, and then at the third place, we got the power red. Now, I gotta tell you, buddy, this thing is not cheap at all. $210 plus shipping, $235. But anyway, let's not talk too much. I know you've been waiting for the unboxing bar, so let's just get the runners out and take a look at it. Man, I gotta say that this thing is very intense. Five minutes for all the part unwrapping. It's very crazy. Now, let's take a look at the instruction menu, just like the box art, nothing interesting. When we take a look inside, you can see the instruction menu and then you can see some crosses as well. Yep. Let's keep flipping. Okay. Okay, we got two bays. One of them is for you to put the red dragon onto the base and the other one is for like a support unit. You can see it right here. We got the flight unit and the ka ka kala to which what how do you pronounce that anyway so let's keep flipping yep yep and it now here's the different ways that you can play with it okay now at the back right here war side decals honestly not very terrible it's not like the wing series, it's not very terrible. I guess okay, and then we got the painting guide right here. Let's take a look at the runners now. Now starting with the H2 runner right here from the original Astray. Um, these parts right here are for the small parts on the legs. For the P runner from the Astray again, head parts, shoulders. F runners, shoulders part, hands part, waist part, joints. Two old runners, feet part and the katana. S part, katana. Q runner, katana part again, BA13 base, D runner, the inner frame of the red frame, T runner, we got the beam rival, the shield, and then the backpack part, beam saber as well, two E1 runners, inner frame of the red frame. You can see the arms part, legs part. We got three RE parts right here. These parts right here are for the sword on the back, the RA1 runner, the flight unit. G runner, torso parts, two poly caps, two C1 runners, the outside armor of the red frame, you can see some legs part, you can see, wait, which part is this, the arms part, A runner, shoulders, chest, and then we got, wait, which part is these, uh, I think it's for the katana part again, feet part, clear piece for the head, RA3, the sensor parts, and this is the RA2, the gigantic antenna. B runner, waist part, legs part, and the front skirt, and then we got the hand armor, and then we can also see the pilot figure. The base for you to hold the gigantic sword, but you know, it's split apart. Katana blade. We got three RB runners. These are the gigantic sword frame. We got three RC parts. Wait, yes, three of them. And this one right here is for the antenna, and then we got the parts on the flight backpack and also the gigantic sword. We have three RD parts. So let's just take one of them. RD1, here we go. RD1, you can see the gigantic sword parts and some of the new parts as well. It's very hard for me to tell actually. Stickers, the last item, water slide decals. 
we went through every single item, every single runner. Let's go to the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the review of the Astre Red Dragon. So this is the finishing of it. For the first part of the review, I will not put on the flight pack because the flight pack is just so heavy. There's no way the Astre is going to stand by itself. So remove the backpack for the first part of the video. Then later introducing the backpack, I will put it back on. And also the pros and cons about the Astre, I will not go through in this video because I already went through every single pros and cons and the weaknesses for the past free Astray videos. So I don't want to repeat all those pros and cons again, and you should know them very well as well. For the articulation part of this Astray right here, I'll just went very briefly about it. I'm not gonna be very detailed and telling you the articulation because all the Astray, they're using the same frame, so the articulation don't really have a lot of difference. Anyway, the warning signs has been cleared, and let's start the review. First, let's just quickly talk about the leftovers. So for the F-Runner right here, we got a piece here that got left out. I'm not sure what this piece does. And for the P-Runner right here, we got the hip part that got left out. And then for the action base runner right here, we got the adapters. For the A runner right here, we got the katana storage. Unfortunately, you don't have enough parts to build another storage. So this part right here is basically useless. We got more action base leftovers. And in this bag right here, contain all the pieces that you can build another katana, the tiger piece. But even you build it, you don't have a place to store it. Let's take a look at the articulation starting from the head. So this head right here, how can you say no to this antenna? This antenna looks amazing, but there's a problem. This antenna literally like can't stay on the head at all. It's very easy to fall off. It's pretty easy to get loose if you don't take good care about it. So I highly suggest you just glue it. But anyway, I'm just going to move the antenna out of the way because I don't want to piss myself off while I'm moving the head. So for the head performance right here, lift up, lift down, moving like 45 degrees to the side and that's it for the stickers part though all the gray piece that you saw on this head right now is all stickers and by the way i don't know why but this head design really reminds me of the mask jacket that i reviewed before let's take a look at the chest right here so at the top of the chest you will see two red stickers that's fine rest of the design is exactly the same like the regular release red frame so I don't have anything new to talk about. For the articulation, you can turn side to side like this, move side to side like this, very nice. When we pull up the middle of the torso right here, pull it up like this, you can move front and back. So that's all the articulation for the chest. Just like the usual, we can open the cockpit, but I gotta say that I really don't like to open the ashtray cockpit because it's so hard to open it. So when we open it, you will see low GUI sitting inside the cockpit. Let's take a look at the arms articulation. So first moving 360, very nice. Move to the front, yes. Lift up over 90 degrees, very good. Bending um, up to the shoulders, very good. So for the rotate, very good. The whole arm can rotate. And for the hands down here, you can move to the front a bit as well, like this. And for the hands option this time is the thumb and index movable fingers and the rest will be moving together. Let's take a look at the waist right here. But honestly, this waist right here don't have a lot of things for me to talk about because you all are so familiar about the Master Grape Ashtray right here. So for the Ashtray, the front skirt, we don't lift up. We move to the side to avoid any interruption. And for the side skirt right here, just like the uh, Ashtray Noir that I did before, Side skirt, very easy to fall out. It's just a ball joint. Gosh, I hate it. And for the back skirt right here, lift up and that's it. And why is this piece keep falling off? Now, let's check out the legs articulation. Kicking to the front, whoa, over 90 degrees. Very nice. Kicking to the back, near to 90 degrees. Very good. Kicking to the side, 90 degrees. Very nice. The bending, U-shape. And then we can see the linking effect right here. Very nice, I like it. And for the feet down here, a ball joint, so you can move like this. And at the back of the legs right here, this part right here, you got a little bit of movement as well. Let's take a look at the backpack right here, AKA the most boring thing for the Astray because their backpack, we saw it too many times, no matter which gray it is. So this backpack right here, I'm not gonna go too detailed, but I gotta say that Bandai, you gave us a pair of beam sabers and you don't gave us beam saber effect parts. So 
That's one solution. You're gonna need to find other master grade model and then fit the beam saber effect parts in it. But I mean, I spent $200 to get the Astray Red Dragon and you can't even give me a pair of beam saber effect parts. This is just cheap. But anyway, so for the backpack, move up, move down, and then we also have the mechanic where you can lower the backpack as well like this up to the accessories part first we got the very boring beam rival because you know with the astray red dragon we have so many fancy weapons the beam rival is not that important so only the sub handle is movable and that's it honestly i don't know what can i talk about this beam rival right here just like all the ashtray if you don't want to use the beam rival you can just flip it up and then just store it at the back skirt right here upcoming next we got the shield right here this shield Compared to the backpack and those fancy swords, this shield seems very insignificant because, you know, it's very boring actually. So to put it onto the ashtray, it's very simple. Just find a spot at the forearm and then plug it in like this. And this is how you put the shield onto the gunpla. Upcoming next is the katana right here. This katana, it kind of gets boring because we saw it too many times. All the curry gold on this katana right here, I respray it to metallic gold, which was why it looks a little bit better. And then you can just pour it out and use it like this. You can store the katana onto the side skirt, but as I said, the side skirt is a ball joint and it's very easy to fall off. If you want to unequip the katana, you will have times where you pull out the side skirt as well. So this part right here, I dislike it. Finally, up to the exciting part. So this is the M1 backpack, or you can call it as flight unit. For those of you that are planning to purchase the Gundam Astray Red Frame flight unit, this is the flight unit. But instead of the robotic arms right here, you will get the fuel tanks that serve as a subwing. Now let's quickly take a look at the backpack right here. You see it's a M1 backpack, but I do want to say that these kind of white thrusters right here, they are pretty easy to fall off. So I suggest you to dip a little bit of glue and it will be all good. For the articulation of the robotic arms, 180 moving angle, very nice, and you can adjust it a little bit as well. For the top wings right here, you can sway a little bit, and also the whole upper flight unit, you can move up like this, but I don't know the purpose of this. And at the bottom thrusters right here, you can move a little bit more than 90 degrees, and it's quite tight as well, so do be careful when you're turning it. The flight pack have another function, so when you pull this part back, you will see a handle in here that you can flip it out, now, for this part right here, for those of you that don't know, if you watch the Ashray MSV short anime, you know that the red frame can have the flight unit separately and then it can hold the flight unit and glide in the air. There are storage spots on the M1 flight pack right here. All you need to do is to turn this white part right here and you'll see some storage spot right here. This side is for you to put the shield. This side is for you to put the beam rival. All you need to do now is to connect the shield onto the spot right here, like this. And also for the other side, it's for the rival. Once you put on the rival and the shield, it should look something like this. Coming up next is the main reason why you bought this Gampla, the Kala Weech. I don't know does it pronounce it like this or not, but I gotta say that this thing looks very cool. The blade is using silver injection, but it's not as bad as the curry gold. There are a lot of ways for you to play with this Kala Weech right here. So first, you can let it stay just like a normal weapon, or two, you can reposition the handle. And this is the G mode, the gun mode or you can play with the two blades right here. Now we got a short blade and a long blade as well. These two blades right here, you can use them individually. You can form a double blade boomerang or like a short dagger with two small blades like this. Now using the connector right here to create another weapon, the double edged sword right here. The last thing that you can play with this weapon right here is to remove the long blade and reposition it at the front of the weapon right here. This is the sword mode. To put it onto the backpack is very simple. This is the spot, you put it in like this. Now this is what the backpack looks like once you put on all three of the Keller Weech. The last thing that I want to talk about is the action base right here. Very standard BA-13 action base, so skip that part. Now, this is the action stand because the Kalawich is very heavy. There's no way a small ball joint is going to handle all the weight. So Bandai gave you an action stand to help you to hold the Kalawich and pose with it. Now, here's the part. They only gave you one of it. So which means if you're someone who really like to pose with that sword right there, 
you can't do double, you can only do one of it. This part right here, I think it kind of took away the fun of it. There are people who like fancy weapons and they want to throw it on their gamma and pose with it. Now, you only gave us one action stance, so which means that you cannot go double of it. Which sounds pretty disappointing to myself because I really want to see a pose where Astray Red Dragon holding two Kalawich and slashing to the enemy. But sorry, you only got one stand, so you just have to deal with it. Thank you guys for watching this video. This will be the end of the Astray Red Dragon review. Personally, for people who cannot afford both Flight Unit and the Red Dragon, I think go for the Red Dragon might be a better option. Flight Unit provided new Baku Head, new Subwings, and maybe Beam Saber Effect parts. If you want to go for the most things change premium Bandai, I think Red Dragon have more new things than the Flight Unit version. Of course, some of you will consider about the space problem, but if you have the space, consider to go for the Red Dragon to get the most out of your purchases. For the next couple weeks, I will stop MG seat related models because I'm just a little in digestion about MG seats. If you like this video, subscribe and hit the bell next to it to get the notification whenever I upload a new video. Donation links is in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.